Hi, my name is Zhu Luren, and this is a joint work with my advisor Eric Sutters from Brown University. The talk is about 3D object detection and layout prediction using cloud of our gradients. So recently there's a growing trend of modeling the 3D world. So specifically, we're mostly interested in working on a dataset called Sun RGBD, which contains many indoor images with depth and camera parameters. So there's also a really uh, high quality annotation such as you know, 3D cuboids with orientation and 3D room layouts. So there's a baseline method on this uh, data set which makes use of the 3D CAD models. So although you know, using a CAD model is fine, there's pr two problems. One of them is that you know, there's not, not, uh, all of the, not all of the objects uh, have the CAD models available. And secondly, the, the, uh, the CAD models, the number of CAD models to choose from is pretty uncertain. There's also another task called room layout prediction. So the idea is to predict uh, floor, ceilings, and walls. There's generally two types of approaches. The first one is to directly op operate on the 2D image itself and treat this as a labeling problem. However, if you back project the 2D, uh, the 2D prediction to 3D, small changes in 2D can lead to really huge errors. There's also another type of approach which directly work on the 3D cuboids. However, due to sensor errors, it can mislead simple layout prediction heuristics. So our goal as a project is to start from a single RGB image and predict the 3D object detection and layout prediction together. So we introduce cloud of variety gradients to model the objects with different viewpoints and Manhattan voxel to model 3D room layout. Finally, we use cascaded detection to model the total C understanding task. So given two cuboids, we first of all discretize it to six by six by six voxels. And for each voxel, we compute the features and concatenate them together. So for the geometric features, we make use of the traditional approach of you know, point cloud density feature and 3D normal distribution feature. However, if you think about it, for those features, we are just making use of the 3D point clouds itself, and we're throwing away really important uh, information that is the original, uh, the RGB image. So, uh, so our goal is to design or model the object appearance, and to, make the, to, mo to model that, we make use of image gradients. So people traditionally use histogram or image gradients for hot descriptor, so it starts by discretizing the input image into cells, compute 2D gradients, predefine some gradient orientation bins, and then construct this histogram for each, uh, each cells. However, this is pretty problematic for the indoor scenes or the 3D uh, recognition task. So why is that? Suppose we have two, uh, two chairs that's facing different directions. If you compute the hog feature at the same location for the chairs, it will be pretty inconsistent. So our goal is to, to model this as a consistent feature. I will be modeling it using cloud of variety gradients. So given two proposed cuboids in 3D, we first of all uh, construct the orientation bins in 3D uh, with respect to the orientation and location of the cuboids. And then we perform per perspective projection and project it into 2D image. So notice in this visualization that the same color represents the same orientation bin. So at the end of the day, uh, the edge binning will be stable across the different viewpoints. So here we show you a sneak peek of our learned 3D cut features. And you can see the general structures or contours of different objects of the indoor scene. So to learn our 3D uh, object detector, we make use of structure SVM. So given an input image, we want to predict a bounding box, which can be discretized into location, orientation, and size. And finally, the confidence score is awaited some of the features. At the testing, we use sliding windows in 3D. The core part of the design for this structure SVM is a loss function. So there's two types of losses. One of them is the location error with respect to the ground truth. We uh, penalize that by using intersection of a union. And the second type of error is the post uh, error, or the orientation error. We are, uh, penalize by the orientation difference with respect to the ground truth. So here we show that all our modeling pieces are important. So all of them are positionally recall curves for the chair detector. The first one shows that the cog is an informative feature. Second one shows that the cog is a, a, a smaller binning of cog is better than the naive binning of hog. And the last one shows that the structured SVM is better than simple binary SVM with hard negative mining.
Uh, so next, we switch here to the layout prediction. So to make the room now prediction, we make use assumption of Manhattan structure. So Manhattan structure is essentially a huge cuboid encompassing the whole scene. So if you do this in an intuitive way, you can essentially do what we did before by discretizing that into voxels, compute the features, do the structure SVM, and all that. However, this is pretty problematic. First of all, we are modeling many redundant information of the inside. Then also, at the intersection of the walls, the feature will be pretty noisy. So we, we introduce Manhattan voxel discretization. To start from a layout prediction, we shrink and enlarge the prediction a little bit, connect the diagonals, and discretize the scene uh, into 12 parts. So by doing this, we can model the statistics along inside and outside of the, cube, uh, of, of the prediction. And also, you can handle the intersection of the walls perfectly. So here we show some visual re uh, results for our algorithm. So the red curve is the ground truth, blue curve is our prediction, and the, uh, and the green line is the saved art. So you can see that uh, our algorithm is pretty stable, and uh, will, it's not misled by the sensor errors. So because all of our uh, detectors are run independently for different objects in the scene, there's going to be a lot of false, false positives. For example, there's a false positive for the chair's detector on part of the sofa. So if you use some really simple heuristic to do that, to do that it won't work in general. And traditionally, people have been making use of Markov random field with fully connected graph to do that. However, the inference is going to be pretty challenging. To handle this, we make use of cascaded classification. Uh, in specific, we model the first stage detector as latent variables in a directed graph. So actually, if you marginalize the first stage variables, you can recover the fully connected graph as is shown here. And then we want to update the confidence scores at the second stage detector. So in specific, we model this problem as a binary labeling problem. For each proposed cuboids, we uh, predict whether this is a true positive or a false detection. So for the if we design some features for object objects and object layout uh, relationships, such as 3D relative overlap, confidence difference, and distance and angle to the wall. We may be using the uh, SVM to train uh, to get the new confidence score and add back to the previous um, score to get the final estimation. So here we show some uh, experiments. The blue curve is our first stage detector. And the other curve corresponds to those with more and more contextual information. So you can see that with more and more contextual information, our performance is getting better and better. So here are the average precision scores on the Sun RGBD dataset. We all perform the baseline starting shape in all object categories, including those with no CADMOS models available. Uh, we also do experiments to model the total C understanding test. So we are, not surprisingly, we also outperform the baselines. So in this year's APR, there's an independent work by, uh, by Princeton's vision group called Deep Sliding Shape. So by the uh, time of our submission, our performance is already pretty compatible with their current submission. After the, our submission, we made some further changes by modeling more context and added some ex extra, uh, extra geometric features. And now our performance is actually a lot better than them. And also we are not using any deep learning features. So to conclude my talk, so here are some visual uh, results of our algorithm. The first column is the ground truth, followed by sliding shape, our first stage detector, and our final stage, uh, or the second stage cascaded detection using contextual relationships. So I'm, I'm happy to discuss with you the details at the poster sessions, and thanks a lot for the attention.